So, as you know, we pulled the motor out a little while ago. When building out the van, we decided to frame everything off metal. Four months ago, we bought this van to build out as a full-time home for me, my partner, and their two dogs. I want to do a mid-van tour because there's a lot of new things that we weren't talking about doing. Obviously, over the span of four months, a lot of things can change, so let's get into it. We'll start on the outside, and then we'll move to the inside. Starting on the driver's side, Lance added the rock sliders. These actually came with the van, which was pretty nice, and then he ended up extending it a bit back here. We like the flared out and open look there. A big thing you might notice that's different is the entire side of the van is no longer tan. It's now a fun, creative color that we will be painting over. So we haven't gotten to that part yet. No problem. We're going to get the inside done first. This was the most important additive on the van build, our roof raise. What is it, babe? Like a foot and a half? I think like two feet. We actually got this from a junkyard locally here that we went to for 300 bucks. And usually these are six grand and then you have to pay for install because companies will only send it to a shop to install it not a personal home for liability reasons and then we took these truck windows they're on like the back of truck like a bed cap and so we removed both of those windows on the top and put them on here probably like 50 bucks i would say from the junkyard huge save on that rv windows are super expensive added this motion sensor light that we can turn on and off when we want to this is another big thing that we had to do on the van lance is 61 ish he couldn't lay this way in the van he had to lay that way in the van so these are called van flares and they're actually like 1600 if you want to buy them already done instead since lance is a fabricator he chopped up some metal threw them together just like that it was super easy super simple so now that added about four more inches for him to lay across on the van and we don't have to have a super long bed now we can have it this way and save space on the inside so at the back you can see this green stripe that goes across the roof it's fiber ass so it looks green already but that's because we had to shorten it it actually sat out about right here because it was meant for the long version of the Econoline, line so we cut it in half took out that chunk and then scooted it over and it actually worked out pretty well it still goes with the flow of the van which we were nervous about but it turned out good this is another outdoor light that one's just going to be on a switch from the inside and we want all the van to have lighting around especially for at nighttime it's good to kind of flash people animals see your surroundings so we're pretty excited to have those i want to go over the base of of our back area that basically started this whole creation we always knew we wanted to have doors but we didn't know how and then we partnered with move bumpers and this gave us the option to do just this these are actually accessory doors for a bronco lance ended up extending them a good bit to fit the boxes and i don't think he had to extend it too much for this tire but they just swing open like so a little tight a little heavy and this did add some weight back here but i mean we're living in it full time we need the storage space for this so this fully opens the doors can still fully open this here is for our winch we're going to have a winch in the back and the front uh, we still have a hitch if we need to tow things trailer hook up and then we're going to put some lights in here as well on that side and this side so this was the classic back bumper with the accessory doors added on and again lance had to fabricate a good amount for it because it wasn't meant for this but ended up working out pretty well this that one needs to be greased up yeah, it's a little tight. up top here this was something we were not planning even discussing until probably about a month ago in the midst of summer we haven't had a vehicle that had true ac in a very long time we haven't used ac in a very long time and we thought to ourselves why aren't we trying to figure out how to add ac into the van especially on hot days when we have the dogs and they can't be outside with us or we're trying to go do something and we can't leave the dogs but it's too hot on the floor to leave the dogs or to take them it's a whole thing so you really need ac in these things so we ended up adding the mini split it's not fully hooked up yet we're going to be 
figuring that out after we paint it because once you hook up the AC lines on the back, they come pre-charged and we don't want to accidentally do anything to that to where it unhooks and then it's not charged anymore. It doesn't work. And this should be able to work off of our solar battery bank for like 10 to 13 hours. We've actually been running Lance's welder and a few of the saws off of our solar power for the last week in the shop, which is a big, big bonus. I never thought we'd be able to say that. So this should be able to run and keep us cool in the summer. Below the mini split is an extra light and then we also got a third brake light because the mini split covered that top brake light. So we'll be adding that on the metal below it. But let's come over to the other side. It's gonna be a little bit congested because we're in between the garage that we've been working in and the van. You can see this second van flare on the other side how much it comes out and this actually has all of the body and bondo work done to it so it looks nice and smooth and it'll be that way on the other side but we hopped off of prepping the outside of the van to get the inside done and then we're gonna do it that way rather than doing the outside before the inside mainly because what if we accidentally screw through something what if Lance wants to weld something up to the body frame? There's a lot of things that we don't know we're doing yet on the inside and we don't want to have to redo something on the outside for it. Um, but you can also see the second window. So both sides match pretty well. This window's actually up front a bit more. We wanted it above both of these doors, A for ventilation, our stoves on this side, but also that way we can have more upper head storage in the back area. It just made sense. And that side, the window's farther back because we have storage basically along the store on that side of the van. And what's not on it now, because I'm going to be working on painting that soon, we have a Dometic electric awning that comes all the way out. And we're going to be adding some supports to tie down to the van on that too in case a random wind gust comes up. Mm -hmm. Okay, we just took a break and got some water. One thing people don't tell you after doing a tour video, and this is a very random tour video that we decided to do, is it's very exhausting. So, got some water, we're good now. This was very, very important. Hank, our big brown dog, doesn't have the best agility, unless it's about food, then he could probably hop all the way in. But for the daily use, he wouldn't be able to step into the van. And again, that's extra steps every day to lift him in. So Lance created the step. Super easy. It's actually stiff enough to where it will just, maybe it's a little too stiff. We'll see. Everything can adjust. But so it sits like this while we're driving. It's out of the way. It doesn't mess with the clearance that we had going on at all. And then when we want to open it, you just slide it down and it stops there. And that will have the boat matting that we're planning on adding as well. This is for our water heater, which we'll get into when we hop on the inside. I want to show you one more thing on the outside, and I'm actually gonna give the camera over to Lance for a second to explain what's been going on with the engine. So, as you know, we pulled the motor out a little while ago, and there's quite a few reasons we did that. But now it's back in and running. So this is kind of the front part. We have the grill that goes on, the lights, and then we have a big move bumper as well that's going on here. We'll also have a winch up front here. This motor ran pretty good when we got it and then driving it up here to Montana from LA started running awful and started leaking everywhere and just i just think it needed to be pulled out and gone over and i'm glad i did that because there were some things that were pretty worn out and i was able to replace big reason why we decided to pull it out is we're at a place where we can pull this motor out and we don't have to move right away. If you've ever worked on a van, it is very difficult to get to a lot of components and it turned out just to be easier and faster to pull the motor out rather than trying to replace everything with it in. Now we have a little bit more power on this motor. And cut. That's good. Come on in, folks. It's actually a little extra toasty in here this morning. These windows let in all the sunlight. And sun, if you didn't know this, creates heat. We will be adding full blackout curtains to every window in this vehicle. Don't worry, we know that. I guess we'll fully go over what's going on on here, what we're planning to do. I think a lot of it actually stayed pretty similar to what our previous plans were in the last tour right after we got it. And then we just kind of had to figure out the fine details and we'll go into those now. When building out the van, we decided to frame everything out metal, mainly for sturdiness, Lance welds for a living. That's what he's always done. So we decided, why not? 
try something new. It should be more sturdy, add stability. And then it became a huge headache. Lance could tell you all about it for a while, but we had to then figure out how to make it look good. So originally, usually you build framing and then you put the cabinets in front of it on top of it pretty much. So basically like out here, but instead we're actually in setting all of our cabinetry. So you can see this facing here is inset with the metal. So that will show, and it kind of, we like the look. We really want a raw distillery brewery look. So it's in set. And then we have the metal kind of framing it out. And then it also is going to save a ton of space instead of having half an inch out for the facing, then half an inch out for the cabinet drawers and doors. It's all actually going to be flush, which is very important to save space, especially in a tiny space. Another reason I think why he added all the metal framing is because we ended up replacing the entire floor in the van. It was completely rusted out, so he took all of the sound deadening off that was in here. There was literally puddles of water underneath, rust holes in the front and the, in the back. So this is all new flooring, and then we're actually working on stiffening it up a bit right now. We used probably a little bit too thin of metal, so it was kind of wavy, but we're adding this bar right here, and that should stiffen it up pretty good. So this is the first section that's been done on the van, really on the inside, and it's almost pretty much complete. So let's go over the countertop first. This is all walnut. We actually went to lum a lumber store and milled it down, glued together separate pieces. They're about that thick across, and we created our countertop. So there's another huge slab in the garage for the other side. And we love how this is looking so far. It all needs to be sanded and completely finished, but we're waiting for everything to be in and then we're gonna pull it all out and paint it at once so it doesn't get ruined in between. This actually pulls out. Wow. It's swollen up because of the rain. Oh, okay. This is our stove underneath and it's really, really important for us, especially me. I love using an oven. So this is a stove oven combo. Uh, from Camp Chef, it's just meant to be like a portable one, but we're gonna use it just as a stagnant house oven, um, which is really nice. You heard me talking earlier. Up here is our window, and this is actually where it'll vent out, so we can add a little fan here and vent out any food. But this is also a second door behind it, so we can also just open the second door and have all of that excess heat and smoke go out. But it worked out great, and then this is just a little board that we can set to the side. And then once it's off and cools down, we can set it right back in. This oven is also surrounded in heat proof board, so all of the heat should kind of vent out. But then we had to figure out where we're gonna be storing our propane. So the propane is actually underneath behind this. I'll take you out there in a second. And then our water heater is right to the right over in this corner. So anything that needs propane is actually all tucked right here. So say we have a propane leak or we just need to run more lines or fix something, it's all gonna be in this area, which will be nice. That way it's not propane all across the van. This will be a little flip down door because there's a weird pocket in here. And we're just probably gonna store extra tools wrenches, anything that we don't get to on the daily but might want without having to go outside to get to. Over here we have our first drawers that have been installed. This one's a nice little deep one. And this, you're gonna giggle, but all space in the van is important. That's, that's the drawer. <laughs> but that's because the water here is behind it. And there will be another drawer down here. And he actually just added this wood facing here. So you can kind of see how the van's gonna look. Again, all this wood's gonna be painted. The metal's gonna be painted. A metal looking color, but it's gonna be painted. But we're putting everything in and then taking it all out to paint all at once, which will make it to where right when we leave it all looks nice before it probably gets ruined by us and the dogs. So now we're to the bed area. As you can see, not much of it is done yet, which is okay because it's pretty much gonna stay how it is. You can see the van flare and you can actually see how much more space it gives on each side. I am standing where our table's gonna go. So the bed's actually gonna turn into like a U-shaped couch table area and then this platform will pop into the table and then during the day we'll put this table down 
have the bed folded out and we can sleep or whatever I, during night, maybe during the day. And then when it also folds up, we're gonna need a backer to fold up. So it's gonna kind of be like a tri-fold situation. So fold up, have a backer fold up, and then have it fold up here as well because this is going to kind of be like a platform that will be against the van flare and across and that will kind of be an extra space we can set things on but really the goal that pocket that's going to be behind the backer and that platform is where we're going to store the blanket the pillows all of our bed stuff during the day the bed area is great storage and this is really why we wanted the bed to not completely fold up or not completely go away because we wanted to use this as storage space in the back as well so on the farthest side over here basically in line with where the door doesn't open is going to be our solar setup so all of our solar components are going to be here and then we can run wiring all that type of stuff for it and then right to the right of that my right your left right next to that right when the door starts to open is actually going to be slide out drawers i'll find an example most vans do this or they just have an empty compartment which is what we had in the bus but we ended up just having bins that slid out and it was kind of really difficult to unpack it because the bins would slide around and it was just heavy so having them just as actual drawers will be really nice we bought heavy duty drawer sliders from ebay actually we saved a ton of money i'll put that in the link below if you want to check those out if you've been interested in doing that about two drawers here and then when you sit on the bed imagine the mattress is right there you're actually gonna be sitting a bit higher so there will be a little drawer that slides out from the front area and then past this and on will be another drawer and it'll probably be pretty skinny but again every storage space in a van is very important since it's also going to be a u-shaped area from here on is going to be a nice big deep drawer that you can open up and all these drawers will come open from the back two doors except this little drawer from the front area over here will be another two drawer storage space just like this one and then behind that's going to be our water tank and we actually custom ordered this water tank is it 35 gallons 36 36 gallons i've heard of some people having a good amount more than that in a van but i think you have to be single living or without two dogs because storage space is really important for two people and two dogs so we opted for 36 gallons and that's just going to be right against the wall and then all of our water plumbing is actually right in line with that which is nice this is the other side of the mini split if you haven't seen one before go look them up they're super efficient and we've seen a lot of people use them this is pretty much how it's going to be mounted we might have a little storage nook below it on the side we are planning on having upper head storage everywhere that we can but I think we're probably gonna wait until we get everything down here finished that way we can see exactly where our heads hit and Lance is taller so he needs to kind of test that stuff so he's not constantly bumping his head or having to think of those things but yeah so this is actually the Senville AC unit I'll put the exact one that we AC got and heater oh yeah it's a heater too I don't care about that because it's been summer been the winter I'm sure I will care so AC and heater we'll put all of that information below so you can look into it again we haven't fully installed it yet so you'll have to come back to see exactly our review we'll probably do like an actual review video on it so the outside unit you might have seen had a metal platform that it was sitting on and instead of just attaching that in like two areas we decided especially with the awning to support everything all around so there is metal support that comes all the way around up down these pillars down the pillar on this side and then this will support actually goes all the way up and across and down the other pillar and this is supporting our awning as well so we're just trying to create structure and as we go over there you'll see there's more structure on that side to support the fiberglass roof as we we're looking at the roof we decided to add a moon roof sunroof i'm not sure the technical term of what i should call it but this is something that I think we kind of always dreamed of. We've seen it in a few vans, buses before. Just a skylight in general. But we didn't want to buy a weird bulky one. We really wanted it to sit flush. So we actually found this at the same junkyard as the roof on a Toyota Tercel. Tercel? I don't know how to pronounce it, but something like that. It was an 87. And it actually ended up matching the angle of the roof really nicely. But the coolest part this sunroof will actually open so the back will just crack open yeah and it's not fully installed yet so i don't want to break it it'll just kind of crack open like that or 
<laughs> hey, I did put the bucket there. <laughs> it's not fully installed yet. Uh, rain bucket. <laughs> yeah, we need to add weather stripping and all that stuff to it. Um, but then this side actually will fully open, open, open. We'll probably put a strut on it, and it can be your so-called emergency hatch, or just like an open space. So we can have, we could probably put a fan there, have a nice breeze going pop our head out, stand on the bed, and say hello like it's a limo. And then we'll have a flush blackout curtain for that too. Every window's gonna have a blackout curtain. This Max fan, um, it can be open when it's raining, but we actually are a little disappointed. We accidentally got the one that only vents out rather than blows in as well. So I don't know what we're doing with that. I guess you also might see these bolts running throughout the roof. We have three solar pa panels. Are they 200 watt or 100 watt? 100 watt. We have three 100 watt solar panels, so 300 watts of solar. Our battery bank, I'm just gonna ask Lance because I don't know. We have 560 amp hours of lithium batteries from Dokan Power, which they came in battery like cells and I configured them into a 24 volt system. That's what runs our whole van. This is actually the most power we've ever had and we have a 3000 watt inverter, which is a true 3000 watt inverter uh, constant run, which is pretty exciting. It's like a 6000 watt peak. Okay, so we have the kitchen area and the front area left. This area is gonna be our sink and we actually have a drying rack built into the sink and a cup rinser in the sink, which is pretty cool. And this is gonna be our bar area. So we're gonna have liquor, beer, and we are actually talking about having our fresh water fill port instead of having it just regular. We wanna do a, a beer tap, but for fresh water, so we'll see if that works out. Um, and then just kind of going up here, you can see this gave extra support to the roof, but this will also be storage, so just pull out drawers. And below, this huge pocket is gonna be our composting toilet. It's a nature's head, uh, you just pull it out. Actually, where I'm sitting is about where you're gonna use the bathroom, and then put it back in, and simple as that. And we'll have it vent out directly. Below here is going to be where the gray water tank is, so all the water will just kind of run that way, and then down to the gray water tank. We're really excited about this space above the driving unit. Uh, we left all the metal there rather than cutting it out for the roof because we wanted to use that as storage area anyways because you just sit there. So this will just be gigantic, gigantic storage. And then maybe we'll have like a flip down TV. We'd really like to put a screen of some sort in here because We've been using an iPad and duct tape for the last year and a half of our lives, so we'll, we'll see what works out. And then just like any normal car, van, we have the driver's seat, passenger seat, but instead of leaving this space open and wasted or as a space that our dogs could be all up in our face while we're driving and stuff, we want them back here in their own space. We decided to add a fridge there. So our fridge came with a slider, so it fully slides out, goes back in. We could grab some snacks, some food from it. Our center console is now our fridge. Yeah, and it, it actually looks like a center console. It's our armrest. It's at the perfect height that it needs to be. We also painted this front area. We might be changing the color later on because of things that we've been doing, which actually let me take you back outside. So something I've been working on is storage area for all the doors and the door panels. We don't want the plastic door panels that are already here. We want it to look nice and pretty. So this is a storage box and then the door panel will go in front of it. I'll grab that in a second. This door has a shelf storage box I insulated around it um, and then we only could do these on the doors that the windows only pop open because the roll down ones obviously the window has to go into the door but let me show you how it's looking and I'll kind of give you an idea of what the van's gonna look like when we're done so I'm actually clear coating to these today and hopefully we'll install them but you can see how it looks I gave all of these deep drawers a good lip I don't want to worry about things falling out while we're driving that's my biggest pet peeve, especially we have the fridge in between the two seats, so I can just run back there as easy as you would hope. So yeah, this is gonna be on every single door, and if it doesn't have these cubbies, it'll just be this. And that's kind of the style vibe we're going with. Camera battery overheated, so we're gonna finish it up now. <laughs> this is our little bitty propane tank. It's 26 pounds? I don't know. Mm -hmm. 
I guess. We got this from Murdoch's and it fits perfectly in between the step and the door. And then if you actually are looking to add something like this to your van, we ended up extending the step in a little bit. So you would have to also do the same for something like this to fit. But then right next to it is our outdoor shower. So the hose and everything's off, but pretty simple. You just hook up the hot water heater to the shower. We're probably going to end up hooking it up here, have a little curtain here and we have a shower. So that is pretty much it for the van build, what we're planning with it, what's done so far. If you wanna watch to see the finished results, make sure to subscribe, like the video, comment. The more you interact with us, A, it helps us, but it'll also help you see our next video because it shows YouTube that you like our content. So thank you so much for watching and we'll see you on the next build video.